The Big 12 kicked off media days last week. The SEC has taken over our home city of Nashville this week. We will, of course, bring you coverage from that event. But uh, first, we really, we got to react to the words from a future SEC head coach. That is Oklahoma's Brent Venables throwing some really not so subtle shade at Miami. Check it out. Six and seven, none of it's any good, <laughs> um, <laughs> right? But if had we been, you know, had we gotten blown out by a middle Tennessee right had we gotten beat by Florida State 45 to 3 right you know the conversation's probably a little different yikes uh Blair a lot of people are looking at this and saying this came out of nowhere I mean what is this Oklahoma versus Miami feud but if we're reading the recruiting tea leaves here why do you think that this kind of makes sense Emily, we love to read the recruiting tea leaves, and I think this is just another example of a coach, in this case being Brent Benables, maybe fighting some negative recruiting that has been going around, right? I think he is very open about potentially being a program that's, you know, in a way kind of on a hot seat, right? Maybe not the greatest first first season or first year uh, with that program. So probably having to answer a lot of questions. Uh, but it's interesting, right, that he goes after Miami because they've been on some head-to-head -head battles right now with the Hurricanes. They landed Devon Mitchell, the tight end from California via the state of Texas, who reclassified recently to the 2024 class. You also got Jaden Jackson, who announced with us here on the show recently. They beat out Miami for the IMG Academy defensive lineman. And they're also after David Stone, who is a player from IMG Academy, uh, one of the best defensive linemen in the country. And I, I would assume, and based on those words, that you know, Brent Benables isn't going to back down and he isn't going to, I think, go out silently. I think he wants to continue fighting and and the words are true, right? It's always be recruiting. We might meet, be in the month of July. We might be during the, the, the heaviness of media days, but it's always about sending the message to recruits that, hey, look, we did this, we did that, and these other schools are also doing this and that. So, you know, let's not just focus on our, our own negativity. Let's, you know, kind of maybe point some fingers uh, to, to some other schools. So that was very interesting. And there's definitely, definitely a history between these two, you know, top flight recruiters back with Alabama and Clemson. And then, of course, the connections most recently in the ACC. So it is easy to kind of connect those dots. But uh, when you put it out in, in black and white like that and say that they are going after the same recruits and have had this back and forth, that makes a little bit more sense. Let's go back to this week's action in the SEC. Greg Sankey hit the podium to talk all things college football, but as it pertains to recruiting in particular, his comments on NIL were interesting. Future student athletes, those who right now might be 15 or 16 or 17 years old, they deserve something better than to need to sort through a fully unregulated marketplace, being approached by individuals who present themselves as something that they may not be, where anyone can purchase card stock and run it through a printer and call themselves an agent on a business card, and then engage in making offers to young people that are neither transparent, that are not Include, that do not include protections that many of us would expect to be normal. And it makes it difficult for young people to both understand and navigate this free-for-all as they're trying to make life-guiding and life-changing decisions. To our knowledge, no state has taken action to enforce its own state laws around name, image, and likeness activity. Now, Sankey did add that NIL has been, quote, a net positive for young people, but you Blair, talk to recruits and their families all the time. How big of an issue is what he's describing between, you know, these actors that are uh, pretending to be agents and having some of that confusion? I think Sankey brings up a good point, and I think it's it's something that uh, I think a lot of recruits are still figuring out. We are in uncharted territory, and a lot of recruits and their families have a ton of questions. They don't know how to navigate this space yet because it hasn't really been done. 
all they can really go off of is what they hear from you know people close to them or or like you like he mentioned right some of those agents or those nil collectives that are trying to attain their services and their signatures and in a way maybe kind of push a, a recruit to a certain school so there's a lot of different question marks there's a lot of uh, space that maybe hasn't been explored and I think right now it's it's about you know finding those answers finding out you know what's true what might not be true and, and whether or not uh, certain situations could affect a, a recruits you know maybe decision or the way they go about the process so I think for now there's more questions that there are, there are answers and as we move forward uh, I think there has to be a bit more clarity because these parents, these recruits, they're they're scuffling a bit. They're trying to figure out what what's real, what might not be real, what they're signing up for, you know, where they are signing on the dotted line, and what that means. I think all of that needs to be a little bit more clear. And these bad actors can sometimes dominate the conversation, but he did go back, as I said, to saying that this has overall been a good thing, and there has been great opportunity for athletes that wasn't normally there. Uh, he did offer a potential suggestion on how all of this gets solved. I think you know there's also been an ongoing effort to deem student athletes as employees of institutions or conferences or the NCAA. I have yet to have a conversation with an engaged, participating student athlete who says they want to be deemed an employee of their institution or the conference. Efforts like those that have happened in California mandating revenue create new threats around the support of Olympic and women's sports. The bill that was introduced that has been delayed failed to adequately recognize the existing requirements of Title IX, and we were pleased to see the engagement and the efforts of the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee to share their concerns along with the Women's Sports Foundations. Efforts to simply upend the collegiate model place in jeopardy the opportunities for thousands of student athletes for decades to come. The reality is only Congress can fully address the challenges facing college athletics. The NCAA cannot fix all of these issues. The courts cannot resolve all of these issues. The states cannot resolve all of these issues, nor can the conferences. Whether congressional action is achievable is a matter of debate. Pretty clear when he says Congress isn't the only ones that can solve this issue. What are your thoughts on their involvement in solving NIL and all the challenges that college football is currently facing? Yeah, from a pr recruiting perspective, I think it would gain uh, and it would allow these recruits to, to gain that clarity, right? It would eliminate a lot of the gray area. And, and from a congressional standpoint, if they're able to maybe make some laws or bylaws or, or set some standards about specific deals or, you know, employment or things like that uh, of that nature, I think it only helps the, the schools, the institutions and the recruits to find out where that gray area is, where what is black and what is white, where the... the you know, they might be signing whether or not that's a that's a real logistical thing that makes sense for them. So I think Congress, in a way, has to act to, you know, give recruits and, and give their families a little bit more clarity. But also, I think it protects the, the, the colleges and, and protects the institutions that maybe are going through some of these business deals to, you know, kind of assure that that both sides are getting the, the accurate and, and the good you know, in, in a way, the good product of, of mm -hmm. what these deals could be. Just really looking for that standardization of everything. Uh, when you have all these different states doing different things, uh, it makes the most sense to have that federal regulation to come in and make all the rules the same. I have to ask about something that he said earlier on in that clip, though, on athletes potentially being employees and that he's never had a conversation with a student athlete who've said that they want this. Why is this such a complicated issue right now on athletes potentially being employees, whether that's from their school or potentially a league and a conference? I think that means that if you're an employee, you are locked in, right? Employees sign contracts and they sign multi-year deals. And mm -hmm. what would that eliminate for a lot of prospects? Basically the transfer portal, right? Like if you're signing a, a contract out of high school for three, four years, 
uh, and you have to get out of that contract, there's ramifications, right? There are a, a it's a result of, of something that maybe something has to be given up for you to, to get out of a contract. So that's I think that's the biggest issue right now when you think about em, employment and and when you think about players maybe locking in a, a certain amount of years for a school, it, it would protect the school, right? They go and, and sign a big time player and they know that they're going to have him for a couple of years or for however many years they sign him as an employee. Uh, but I think the recruit, the employee in this sense, loses a lot of their rights, a lot of their ability to make maybe make a different decision or move along or, or find a, a different fit. What if you're stuck in the depth chart behind a couple guys and you want to go play somewhere else or you maybe didn't like the, the place that you ended up at? Uh, I think employment would affect the, the ability for you to make a, a pivot and make a change. That's the key. Uh, I think the conversation surrounding employment always goes towards the financial side of things and the payment and that sort of thing. But when you have that employee-employer relationship, there's a level of control. And that's, uh, I think, the scary thought to a lot of student-athletes out there and, and trying to have that delicate balance of they have control, but then also the employer, whoever that is, has the same amount of control. So a lot of complicated issues. I know it seems like college football, doom and gloom, uh, but that was just kind of the theme of Craig Sankey's talk today and all the problems that need some solving. Uh, but it is interesting to dig in some of those bigger picture questions. We do it all the time here on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you have not already. <laughs>